This is Eugene Panrutkiewicz. I'm the laptop screen doc, and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Today we have a HP ProBook 4525S laptop computer with a cracked screen, and we're going to show you how to replace it. Okay, before we do anything, what we need to do is take out the battery so we can work on the laptop safely. And the way we do this is we flip the laptop over, and there's two levers on both sides of the battery. We slide them towards each other, and the battery comes out. We put the battery to the side, and now we can work safely on the laptop. Let's go over the tools we're going to need to work on this laptop. So we're going to need a pair of metal tweezers to extract screws that are stuck. We're going to need an exacto knife with a pointed blade to remove screw covers. And we're going to need an electronics screwdriver. But in this case, it is a little bit unusual. Uh, we're going to need the standard PH1 bit, which stand, PH stands for Phillips, and 1 is the size. We're going to need the smaller PH0 bit. And what's unusual is we're going to need some Torx bits. The higher end HP laptops use a Torx screw. Torx is spelled uh, T O R X and it's kind of like a star shaped screw head. So uh, the screws that are in this laptop are T nine screws, so it's a, called a Torx T9 bit, but we're also going to need a smaller Torx T7 bit to get to screws that are at an angle. Okay, I'll show you what I'm talking about in a little bit. In order to get to the screen, we have to remove the screen bezel, that's the frame, plastic frame going around the screen. In order to remove the screen bezel, we have to get to these screws down here that are securing the screen bezel to the screen assembly. Now, if you go to the HP repair manual, look at the repair manual, they're going to tell you to pretty much take this whole laptop apart, take the whole screen assembly out, and then get to these screws. We have a quicker and shorter way, which I'm going to show you. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to remove the screw covers. And that's what we use our X-Acto knife for. We'll put the screw covers to the side so we don't lose them. There's four of them. We go one by one and remove them one by one, like so. Okay, these screws are an angle and you can't get to them straight. So that's why I'm going to use a smaller T7 bit that's actually a little bit smaller than the screw head size, but it will allow me to get to them at an angle and open them up. So at first, we have to put quite a bit of force on to start the screw. And after that, we let up on the force and the screw comes out and we put it each set of screws in a separate pile so that we don't we can keep track of them when putting the laptop back together so that's two okay this one's a little bit harder so let's not strip it last thing you want to do is strip these screws I've had that happen to me, and you need a strip screw remover tool, and it's not pleasant. You need to drill into the screw. It's not fun at all. So, let's follow my own instructions, put quite a bit of force at first, and get the screw started. Okay, now once that we remove the screws, we want to remove the screen bezel. And that's probably the hardest part of the job. So what we want to do for that is put our fingertips on the screen side of the screen bezel and gently start lifting it up and hear the snapping sounds. If you hear snapping sounds, 
that's a good thing. That's the screen snapping off the plastic mounts. So I go around the screen, and if you get stuck somewhere, just go to a different place. So it does quite doesn't quite want to come out on this place, so I'm going to go to a different place, like so, and then come back to the place that gets stuck. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard. So we keep going around. and make sure that we don't damage anything. Try it gently first, and then use a little bit more force. Make sure all the screws are out. Okay, now that the bezel is almost out, we tilt the screen up a little bit to remove the bezel, and the bezel comes out. Okay, so we put the bezel to the side, and for this type of screen, it's mounted on some metal mounting brackets on the sides, and you have to get to the screws on the sides. And we have to find a way to tilt the screen forward from the screen assembly to get to the screws that are on the sides. The first thing we want to do is use our T9 Torx bit and remove the screws that are at the top here, that are holding the metal mounting brackets to the top of the screen assembly like so, and start a separate pile for those. So we'll mix them up. Like so. Okay, and then we tilt the screen assembly forward a little bit. Now right away, we see that there's not enough tilt to get to the screws on the side. So what we want to do is loosen up some screws down here that are holding the metal mounting brackets to the back of the screen assembly so we can tilt the screen assembly forward a little bit. And we do this like this. We don't want to remove them all the way. We just want to loosen them so we can get to the screws on the side. And we see that the screen, the back of the screen is tilting away a little bit. Now let's check a look if we have enough to get to the screws. We have enough to get to the top three screws, but not enough to get to the bottom screw. So we loosen it up a little bit more. Like so. We tilt to the back. And right away we see that the video cable is holding the screen back a bit, so we remove the video cable, webcam cable. And now we believe that the screen is tilted enough so we can get to all these screws. So for this part, I'm going to use a PH0 bit, and we're going to start removing the screws. Actually, PH0 bit is too small, so I'm going to switch to the PH1 bit, and that can engage the screws a little bit better. And we're going to start removing the screws one by one. And once again, we want to start a separate pile for this. When you do this part, make sure that the screen is tilted back a little bit. So when you remove all the screens, so that the screen doesn't fall back on you, or fall forward on you. Okay, we lost the screw there, so I'm going to recover it once we remove the screen assembly. Okay, same thing on this side. Start with the bottom one. Two. Three. And four. Okay, the screen is loose and we slowly tilt the screen forward like so. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have. It's a LED screen. We see that because it only has one connector on the bottom left. First thing is we remove the webcam cable so it's not in the way. There's some tape securing it. We we'll remove this tape. And the next thing is we want to remove the video connector. 
And in order to do this, there's some adhesive tape that's on top. We lift up this adhesive tape. In this video cable, it has some adhesive on the bottom, so we have to lift that up like so. And once we lift that up sufficiently, there's a clip with some adhesive on the adhesive tape on there. And you want to lift up this clip. Okay, so make sure you see this clip. Make sure that you lift up this clip, otherwise you're going to try to pull the connector out and it's going to be stuck and you might damage something. Okay, lift up the rest of the adhesive and the screen is off. Okay, so right now what I'm going to do is give a little tutorial on how to reconnect the video cable because that's the biggest source of trouble that I see from people who don't it on their own. So when you slide in the video cable, you'll feel a little click. You'll feel like a clicking motion. And then you lower the bar. In this case, once you lower the bar, the connector is fully engaged, so it's not as bad. But the ones that don't have this bar, it's a little bit harder. So let's get a close-up, see what it's supposed to look like. Let's get a good focus. Okay, this is what the connector is supposed to look like when it's fully engaged. There's no seam between the two sides of the connection, and there's no angle. It's fully engaged. So pause the video right here and make sure your connection looks like this when you do it yourself. All right. So next, let's take, let's remove the connector again. Let's take a look at this screen. This is a very standard type of screen. It's a 15.6 inch LED backlight screen with a connector on the bottom left. As of middle 2011, that's the most common type of screen out there. Okay, let's take a look at the part number. Part number is N156B6. This is what you look for when you do your search. Okay, there is there is something unusual, however, about this screen is that it has a matte finish, not a glossy finish. Most screens you find these days have a matte finish. So if you really insist on a screen with a matte finish, you got to specifically specify a matte finish or make sure that whoever's selling you the screen specifies a matte finish. Now, we at Screen Surgeons also sell this screen. We do not sell a matte finish. We sell a glossy finish. A glossy finish screen is 100% compatible with this laptop. So the only thing you'll notice different is that you have a glossy finish on the screen, the graphics and the brightness will stay the same. The advantage that you get with us is that we offer free email technical support when we do the installation, and we also have a compatibility guarantee. If the screen is not right, we'll replace it at no charge. To order the screen from Screen Surgeons, please go to screensurgeons.com and click on Buy a Screen. There you'll have a short form for you to fill out and we'll respond right away with a link to the right screen that you need. Okay, so when you have your screen and ready to put it in, reattach the connector as I showed you. Put the screen in on the metal mounting brackets. Tighten the screws to the hinge assembly down here. Make sure you don't forget this step or your hinges will break. Put the screws up on top, back, then insert the bezel, snap it back on, and put the screws in that hold the bezel together, and you're done. And you should be good to go. Uh, once again, my name is Eugene Panrukovich. I'm the Laptop Screen Doc, and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Thank you very much, and good luck.